What do you know about Taste of Armageddon? Uh, what I know about Taste of Armageddon is that it is an episode of Star Trek, the next, uh, the original series that was written by Robert Hammer with the teleplay by Gene L. Kuhn. Oh. Uh, Joseph Pesney, Pevney, the same guy who did Arena and Return of the Archons. Oh. Uh, is our okay. is our director? Yeah. Okay. So we've we've seen a couple of his episodes and we liked them. Um, Return of the Archons, you and I gave an, a nine and eight out of ten respectively, and Arena was a seven and eight out of ten. So like this is somebody we we like, you know. Cool. And then I've got that it was originally aired February 23rd of 1967 with an 8.0 out of 10 from IMDb. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen the episode. It's a computer simulated war episode. Yeah, and they, uh, yeah, so I, this one, for some reason, this one stands out in my mind as like one I definitely remember seeing. And also seeing as an adult a couple years ago when I watched a few of these. Yeah, it's, it's it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the one where they want to kill Wesley because he, his, his name's not Wesley, is it? Is this Wesley Crusher? Oh, Will Wheaton's yeah. the actor. They want to kill yeah, Wesley but... because he stepped on the flowers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I watched that one fairly recently. Yeah. So this is like a computer simulation is running a war. So they're like, we don't have to spend money on tanks and bombs and stuff. We just see what the computer simulation says and then we execute that many people. And yeah. uh, Kirk, you happened to visit on the day that this city was decimated by the computer. So uh, please go ahead and get into the execution machine. And Kirk, I almost feel like Kirk might do a like, well, prime directive. I don't know. But of course, actually, no, I seem to recall, recall Kirk being like, I don't give a shit about this culture. Fuck these guys. We'll see. I don't remember that much detail. I vaguely, I have vague rem reminiscences. I think this actually featured as well on Lower Decks as one of the plants that they went back to. Oh, that's interesting. I don't, yeah, I don't recall that, but yeah. I, would I love don't to, know. I might be mix mixing up episodes, you know? They do go back to a lot of these planets, so. They do. And I just don't, I don't remember for sure. I could easily be mixing it up. I'm not going to pretend I'm not, but I have that, that vague inkling in the back of the brain being like, no, that's something that happens here, you know? We'll see if we encounter this when we're watching Lower Decks. But yeah, no. I, I what I remember, I remember it being a decent episode. I don't remember it super well, but I do remember enjoying it. You know. Yeah, I feel like I like this one. So uh, yeah, so let's take a look. Sounds good. Hello, and welcome back to the Least Ready Room, a podcast where Dave and Chris. And a whole bunch of our friends, like all kinds of people. I always, you know, I make note in the show note below of who is here. And usually I'm correct. Uh, but yeah, usually Saint, my friend Weebs, sometimes Chaos and Fickle Pickle Pie, Thrash Kishu, Surreptitious Music, all kinds of people come and hang out with us and talk to us about Star Trek. Let, I don't even know who's going to be here today. Weebs and Saint, I think. So, uh... Actually, and yeah, we're going to talk to them first, so uh, <laughs> so here they are. Thank you for listening to The Least Ready Room. They're, they're the worst. Like, I've heard, like, speakers built into laptops that sound better than this. Like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Gentlemen. Hey. What's up? How do you do? I'm feeling quite fine tonight. Good. I feel, yeah. I feel like August is leaving us. Oh, yes. Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, the weather today. I'm, it wasn't primo. There was a little, it was a little bit extra chilly because it was like rainy and overcast and stuff. But yeah. uh, but it was good. It could have been a little less chilly and spraying. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to hoodies. Oh, I have been. Oh, I've been wearing hoodies quite frequently. Yeah. So this one is Taste of Armageddon. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite ones again. I found this one, yeah, I found this one to be action-packed. I thought this one yeah. was a lot of fun. It's a little bit, 
I think people like to compare this one weebs to the one where Wesley has to be executed for stepping on the flowers. Oh. <laughs> except, except Kirk doesn't give a shit about the laws of other planets. They might even mention the prime directive, but then Kirk is like, well, that's for people that haven't achieved space flight. These guys have, so fuck them. Anyway, I won't tell you the entire plot or anything, but uh, I, this is, I like this one. Yeah, it's it's good. It's a uh, it's not so subtle metaphor for what was going on in the world at the time when Star Trek came out. I've been uh, I've been trying to kill Moog, Lord of Blood, so I can go to Shadow of the Earth Tree. Oh boy, he has not been killed by me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in so far. Um okay, am I live? You guys uh yes, yeah. would see. you would anyone like to have a drink or a pee or I got, I got my, um, all right. Got, got my water, got my nerd clusters. Oh, I am envious. I've got some I got like a handful of pistachios left, but I probably have some other snacks, but but uh, this will be fine. We're only gonna be here for an hour. Anyway, Ooh. yeah. Let's let's watch. Uh, what was it? A taste of Armageddon. Yeah, <laughs> this one's funny. There's also a lot of really good one-liners, like dramatic one-liners, and also like really silly one-liners. I don't know. If one of the writers was like, I'm going to make Scotty extra Scottish with some weird colloquialisms and shit. Aye, the haggis is in the fire now. Like, Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, Gosh. I feel like this one had like laugh out loud moments. Yeah. <laughs> the haggis yeah. is in the fire now. And like, and, uh, and like, and then like. Bones over there being like, you have to do something, Scotty. Get our captain back. And Scotty's like, like what? Start shooting? <laughs> and then Scotty, you know, Bones is like, uh, actually, I didn't actually have a real idea. So <laughs> I guess I'm going to shut up now. Yeah. So this is, this is, this, this guy, this ambassador character, there is like, he's certainly a Star Trek trope. Oh, God, Mr. Yeah. Fox. He, the, he, he is reincarnated a hundred times. And the asshole, is... the asshole diplomat. Like, dude, how did you get to be a diplomat being such a dickhead? Yeah. <laughs> this one is like, this one's really bad. I would go so far to call this guy an incompetent diplomat. Almost an, gets himself executed. He's an idiot. Yeah. They start shooting. They start shooting, and then he's like, "Yeah, take down the shields." He said it was cool. <laughs> Let's like, fuck this place up. They they tried to impersonate our captain and then shoot at us. Like, I understand you want to make peace, but like, don't be fucking stupid. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, no, I think I'll just go down there and have a chat. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. And they're like, hey, nice to meet you. Let us show you to our disintegration chambers, the most scenic part of our planet. Imagine if like Picard had come down and been like, "You you want to execute Wesley? Well, I'm gonna let's all right, everyone, let's start going around and blowing up all their disintegration chambers and fuck up their whole society." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, murdering people. Yeah, yeah. They, a rampage. Like they did, they they killed a few guards at the end there, and blew yeah. up their complicated computer gaming system. Yeah. Yeah, on a hunch that after 500 years of simulated war, these people wouldn't want to do an actual nuclear war because that would be just way too insane. But and, also, uh, if they did yeah. do the nuclear war, it's, it's no, it's no skid off Kirk stick. Yeah, he, exactly. He's like, <laughs> sounds like a big old, sounds like a big old bunch of. That's not my problem. Like, <laughs> like, oh, you need my crew to come down and get killed. It sounds like not my problem. Yeah. I don't oh, think no. we're going to be doing that. Uh, <laughs> these guys should gonna... not have fucked with Captain Kirk. No. And 500 years down the drain. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, just, yeah, like, 
also, you know that if you blow up, I, I mean, I guess that's another thing you could say is like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, if you try to blow up my ship, even if you were successful in blowing up my ship, they'll send another ship to find out what went wrong. And when they find out what went wrong, you guys are going to have problems. They're not going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're an advanced civilization, but you're not that advanced. We got a whole, like, nation of, you yes. know, yeah. planets out here. Do you think the Enterprise can destroy a planet? Yeah. It totally can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, when you when you look at like the tech manuals and stuff, the oh yeah, the 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 cannon amount of energy released by a photon torpedo is just insane, <laughs> and they've got like a thousand of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you you the Enterprise is one hundred percent capable of rendering a planet uninhabitable for all time. Just. Good to know. Boiling off the oceans and blasting everything flat. They've never done that. No, they've never done that. There's, <laughs> there's, there's no good reason. There's no good reason for them to. <laughs> they, did, maybe, they did Genesis that one planet. Yeah, they did Genesis that one planet. But that was like it was a dead planet in the first place. Yeah, completely. Yeah, it was a dead planet. All right, good. Well, then that's okay. But, yeah. Yeah, but of someone course, someone else had probably come by and bombarded it with photon torpedoes. Yeah, but then of course somebody else was like, "You can genesis a planet that's already got people on it. That's yeah. awesome. It's an ultimate weapon." Yeah. And I don't know if it, like it's like it's an ultimate weapon because it's just like one photon torpedo to kill the whole planet. Yeah, I'm like you still can blow up a whole planet with one starship. Birds. <laughs> Yeah, but like the yes. you know yeah. the Genesis device is like. Yeah, I guess it's small. And... You can send someone over there with a canoe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chuck the Genesis device. Picard does do something a little bit like this at one point. He does decide to totally fuck up two planets. Yeah, the I... ones uh, <laughs> the ones that are addicted to heroin. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that episode. It's, I don't remember that episode. It's preposterous. The, top of um, the situation between the two planets is that one of them produces heroin, and the other planet they all got a plague, and planet number one convinced planet number two that the cure was heroin. But you all have to keep taking heroin forever, forever. or the plague will come back. Well, Don't you it think it so? was a plague, but there is right. But... Sorry, they, I didn't mean to. I get yeah, it. I think I think yeah. Picard is fully justified in that situation, and just fucking people up. <laughs> I just feel like, at some point on the planet receiving the heroin, someone must have run out of money, and realized that they didn't die from not like, having. You would think like no one ever yes. tried to no one ever just for science tried to see what would happen if we didn't take this forever. Yeah, I guess. Did they maybe they just liked taking the heroin so much or were they were they like. No, they were convinced they were like, give us those drugs or we're going to die from the plague. Yeah. And I yeah, hear that dope is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. The does is it? It's not Wesley's mom. Is it Diana that says something? No, it's not. It's Tasha Yar. Yeah, she's like Wesley. Drugs make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Best Tasha Yar moment. Tasha Yar stating the obvious. Yeah, so uh -huh. Picard is like, let these guys go through withdrawal, and then the other planets gonna not have any industry. Because they can't sell heroin to anyone. Fuck them both. Yeah. Really fuck yeah. them both up. Interesting Great. Interesting that yeah. one of the dopings yeah. is played by um, Kirk's son. Ah, uh, yes. That's correct. Yeah. Kirk's yeah. son from two and three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This that's episode, cool. though, is just, like I say, when I said thinly veiled metaphor, I was like, the veil is so thin. Yeah. It's really, yeah. <laughs> just nuclear war is dumb guys 
why are we even contemplating this? Why, like, why are we even pretending this is a thing that we would actually do? Like, just stop it. Stop it with the nukes. Just like the people on these two planets, we could just fucking stop. Yeah, you could just, they're like, well, we can't stop. We're killers. Like, yes, you can. Yeah, that sounds sounds fucking stupid, Anon 7. (laughs) Anon 7, that sounds like a... It makes you sound like an asshole. Just, you could just decide to stop. (laughs) Stop murdering each other wholesale. But what if they say something mean to us again? And that's really, and that's, yeah. Yeah. It's all... (laughs) Man, too many people are saying too many mean things to each other, and yeah. too many recipients are unable to handle that right now yeah. in the world. Right now, these days, one of the biggest problems with our society right now in 2024 is that too many people are saying mean things, and too pe- too many people are not prepared to have mean things said to them. That's what's yeah, happening. Yeah. That's right. That that's the core of the problem. Uh. Everyone needs to shut the fuck up and probably stop listening. To everyone the, talking to Yeah, them. exactly. You don't actually need to listen to a group of 1,000 random bullies on the internet. Yeah, you really don't. Yeah. Yeah. You be you, Rings I, of Power. Yeah. <laughs> Why were people well, mad yeah. about the Acolyte, or, did it, or was it just bad? Did it just do I, bad? I, I didn't actually go watch it, even though I was, like, interested in, like, Star Wars Jedi stuff. Like, but... Yeah, I heard. I, I heard it was just it was just bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, like people I people I know who are normally just very cool about whatever Star Wars is on, and it's not that they're not like they're like if it's woke, it's terrible. You know, they're like they're like no, I I like wo- I like woke stuff. Woke is good. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like no, actually, it was just kind of bad. Damn time it to just be alive. It was it was just not a very good story. I'm having a hard time with discovery. Right yeah. now, I thought I thought it was into it, but it's really just bad TV. That's you know what that's that's fine, and I don't even really disagree with you for a lot of it. Um, yeah, I feel like Discovery doesn't exactly know what it's trying to do, and especially early on, but it never really figures it out. Well, some of the story is fine. Um, some of the character arcs. I can, you know, take it or leave it, but the production value, yeah, I'm like one character has to be the silly one, this <laughs> one's the snooty one, yeah, like, and Michael's some really weird facial expressions sometimes, yeah, and just, I'm just over it. That's fair. It's really overwrought. I like I almost yeah and it's and I don't really recommend it usually. I think that it's like I think it's okay as almost like a gateway into like some new trek and stuff. I feel like if you're starting if you're watching season 3, really I'm not positive if, if it's season 2, but some of the best stuff is the stuff that sets up Chris Pike and Strange New Worlds because there's a whole arc with uh I I kind of want to watch like some new Trek, but I want to watch, I like I don't want to watch another prequel, basically. Yeah, and they're really yeah. they love to do that. That's, they That's, love to do it. They yeah. love they love they're like this happened before Kirk. I'm like yeah. why, why? Come on, there's a lot of interesting like random plot threads left lying around by all of the '90s shows and early 2000s shows, and even by Picard and stuff. I guess I could watch Picard, but I heard. I don't know. I feel like Picard is really overwrought too. Yeah, P- yeah. Picard is unfortunate. Um, season two is a big mess. Season one is like fine, uh, but again, it like it wants to be an action movie, which is weird. Like Discovery yeah. wants to be a real dramatic, like f- half feel good half tense like prestige tv show and picard really wants to be like a spy thriller with a lot of action in it and that's a strange choice for a 79 year old actor however old he was at the time yeah. But see, yeah. season three season three is okay and i have said it before i don't think you need to watch season one and two 
I think you can watch season three, which is the reunion. And it's the gang's all there and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I might just skip ahead to season three. Yeah, I think that that's a fine thing to do. I also right. think Strange New Worlds is, is great. Just great, okay. period. Episodic, like you, each episode is one little story. It's got a real star. It's got a, not exactly a TNG feel, but it's got a like. It's got an it OG starter, I feel. Yeah, it can be silly. And it does have that kind of like, oh, here's the sassy character being sassy. Is that where Pike is now? Yeah, that's the. It's basically the Enterprise right before Kirk. It's the Pike show. Yeah, okay. Strange New Worlds. I yeah. like it. That's okay. I mean, some silly is okay. Yeah, some silly is okay. like. There's always a, a vein of silliness in Star Trek. Oh yeah. Like sometimes just some silly shit happens. Like I don't know why this could just comes into my mind, but Deanna Troy having a dream that she's a cake, and people are carving her up. Oh, is it is it her dream or is that a silly story? premise? That's not. Or maybe it's an entire character when to be silly. Uh, and I know, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because they yeah. do kind of like, yeah. It's like we here's our ensemble cast. You're gonna be this is the silly one. This guy's so serious, but he's got a heart of gold. You know, that yeah. kind of those kind of tropes are real in Discovery. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're real in a lot of shows, but generally speaking, like most shows, especially network shows where you're with these characters for so many fucking episodes. Yeah. They you, become parodies of themselves. Well, I will either that or if it's a good show and it's well written, they become more complicated. Oh, that too. Just, yeah, actually, yeah. You know, because I'm thinking, because I'm thinking of some other shows that where it's like the characters start out as basically sort of like cut out archetypes, but because you have like twenty episodes with them or whatever, and you know stuff happens, and and you find out about like their backstories or whatever, and flashbacks or talking about it, and they become a little bit more interesting, you know. That um, that that does happen on Discovery. I did really enjoy the final season. Okay. Of it, to be real honest, but, yeah. Well, I was gonna say is like, but if they don't ever change, then then yeah, yeah. I don't think the show ever really comes together, and I did not like season four. I don't know why. I just like I forgot about it as soon as I watched it. But season five, the final season, I thought was really good. Yeah. It's Star Trek, you know. I mean, it's for me. That's all that matters. Although I although I didn't like Prodigy, so maybe. That isn't all that matters, but I mean, let's be honest too. It's not like we like every episode of yeah Star Trek that we're watching right now, or even TNG and DS Nine. It's not like every episode was a banger, for sure, for sure. In fact, in most of the '90s shows, I think the first two seasons can probably go. <laughs> I just actually, I just got Paramount Plus. Oh, um, great! It's great. I will. I love. It. I decided to drop Disney and, and get Paramount. And, they have so an always-on Star Trek channel. Please continue, sorry. Yeah, was, whoa, really? Because I was about to yeah. say, I, 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 I might just pick that because I was like, I was a little always paralyzed by what Star Trek I should start watching. Oh, yeah, that's a that's my advice, actually. Yeah, watch the always-on channel and if when, when something catches your eye. Because, I, you know, when nothing's going on, that's what's on the TV in here. Nice. Okay. Just whatever they're, whatever they're, whatever Star Trek they're spinning. I kind of feel like that's how I like to watch Star Trek. I just kind of like to watch episodes out of yeah. order, yeah. see what's going on. Yeah, like on TV in the 90s. Uh, Syndicated yeah. after school. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, um, yeah, Star Trek is great. Yeah. So I give Taste of Armageddon nine fusion bombs out of 10. Cool. I'm, I'm down to give it 10 fusion bombs out of 10 because I think yeah. it's a rollicking, I think it's a romp. Yeah, it's real good. This is this is another one of my favorite episodes. Um, again, I think I've said that a couple of times. Um, but yeah, it's just so good. I mean, the the unsubtleness of the of the story does not detract from the fact that it's good. For sure. Uh, I mean, that's part of it for me. The the over the top yeah. nonsense of it all. Yeah, exactly. It's it's. It's a little bit like a satire, like reading yeah. like Catch like Catch Twenty Two or yeah. Animal Farm or something like that. You know, like one of totally. those books that just you know it's describing something that's just so horrible and so brutal and and so awful. But it's so you know, but in in just the most absurd way, just and people just doing absurd 
stupid shit in the middle of this like awful brutality and not just say and not pe- and people just not saying like like stop just fucking stop <laughs> like why does this have to happen stop you know and in this and in this it's just like the absurdity is you know is cranked up to 11 because it's like you guys are really not fighting a war at all you you can't call this a war this is some kind of ridiculous peace treaty that you have between your two things that you agree to like murder a couple million of each other every year to avoid you know whatever i don't know but or to like make you feel better about yourself that like yeah well we killed a bunch of those fuckers over there on that planet this year yeah in revenge for our people they got killed last year or something for like 500 years that is insane silly behavior that is that is yeah that is insane behavior and kirk is just not having it kirk is just like no i am not participating in this i am not entertaining this whatsoever this is the stupidest shit i have ever heard you could just decide to stop killing each other we did it We decided to stop killing each other, and we've been doing a relatively good job of it. Yeah, sometimes shit happens, but mostly we're not killing each other, and you can you can too. Um, do you have a fusion bombs out of ten, Weebs? Uh six. Oh, okay. This one, a couple, some of these have not been hitting you as much as a. Uh... Per usual, um distracted because I'm on work hours. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I hope that you had fun. It's typical TOS. (laughs) Yeah, it is. I mean, they, yeah. It is, yeah. They kind of are. And, you know, yeah, I guess a lot of it depends on how much you like TOS or like this crew, you know. Yeah. But, uh, well, yeah, I hope you had fun hanging out and watching it. And thank you to both of you. Good deal. Awesome. Um, yeah, the next one I also think is a romp. Um, this side of paradise, it's, uh, it's got spores that make you feel happy. It's a drug, it's a drugs episode. Yeah. It's a don't, don't do drugs episode. Yeah. <laughs> I like it a lot, as a matter of fact, just probably for that reason alone. Yep. Get a lot of shots of the characters with big goofy grins on their faces because they've gotten the spores. That's cute. Funny stuff. Alright, guys. Yeah, thanks for being here, and uh, yeah, good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Talk to y'all real soon. Bye. You think Gene Roddenberry is mad at computers? I think in the 60s they were unknown and untrusted the way that people nowadays don't trust AI. Okay, okay, all right, sure. Yeah, he's got, we've got Landrew getting blown up two weeks ago. Last week, Khan learned how to use the computer to take over the Enterprise. This week, this is I mean, do you think the premise of this one is silly? A little bit. I okay. think it's a little bit goofy. <laughs> All right, good. Because there's something about it that doesn't quite make a ton of sense. Other than the fact that it's been five hundred years and somehow their ancestors were brainwashed into this system and they're just still doing it. It makes sense in that almost religious kind of we have to avoid yeah. escalation. But yeah. the system doesn't make sense. I feel like as well, the the system that they've got set up is valuing possessions more than humans. Like more than life. I mean, oh, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because they're 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 actively doing a thing that doesn't damage the infrastructure, doesn't damage buildings, doesn't damage anything else, but they still kill the quote unquote expected amount of people based on an attack, right? So like it just it feels like it's a um you know don't want to don't want to destroy the stuff that that costs money but who cares about you like who who cares about the cost of human life or whatever it's the necessary cost that we've all agreed must be paid to yeah 
protect us from the terrible Vendikar who will destroy us with atomic radiation disease and horrors if we don't uh, send our citizens to the vaporization machines. Jesus. Yeah. This is the planet Eminar. Aminiar. He, I, I almost, it almost looked like reading the subtitles that he had in the final moments, Kirk had referred to the people as M&Ms. Oh yeah, M- I missed that. m and or whatever. Yeah, M-N-E-R. Was that, was, the episode as a whole feels a bit on the goofy side, but yes. I also can yes. see how a society got there. Like I can, I, it, the extrapolation on based on like you know, what we know of modern humans and our mentality about things. Like, I can see how a civilization could get there. I'm not saying that's the right choices having been made, but... Huh. Oh, oh, no. The, prog- that's what the progression is, is logical. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I mean, I can absolutely see what this episode is saying, you know? Yeah. Like, obviously, as social commentary, they're, you know, they're putting it's it down. It's a little heavy-handed in this one, yeah. And But, it, and it's almost, but it's like, yeah... This so as a result, the episode has to be kind of goofy. And speaking of goofy shit, uh, I feel like Kirk. I almost instead of opening this with, so is Roddenberry mad at computers. I almost opened it with, so that was an excellent episode of Star Trek Voyager where Captain Janeway <laughs> throws the Prime Directive directly out the winter window, causes yeah. an anti. Uh, interplanetary war doesn't give a fuck about anything laughs at the guy who's saying now we're gonna die from atomic bombs and disease it kicks does him feel over very and then gives the fuck out calls yeah, up bella B- bella Bellana. Bellana's like okay we're gonna nuke the surface of the whole planet you motherfuckers <laughs> and it's just, this feels very voyager now that you've pointed it out Harry and Paris, like in those plastic suits with the rubber hats, like oh, yeah, 100%. gooning around. Right. I'm sorry if I interrupted a couple of things you were saying, but no, I was, no, I was, I was really I, into I that idea. <laughs> I hadn't put that together myself. Like I hadn't seen it that way, and it's true. It's a very Voyager episode. Is all I was trying to get at. Like it feels yeah. like something I'd expect of them. I just hadn't. I hadn't clued into that myself. You know. Yeah. Tuvok rampaging around, knocking people out. Sh- Disintegrating the disintegrator machines, disrupting Neelix is, the disintegrators. Neelix insisting that no, 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 everything's fine. We just need to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh my God, Neelix is Mister Fox. You annoying motherfucker, Neelix. Yes, <laughs> yes. I didn't even. Oh man, I didn't even have that one chambered. That's perfect. That's exactly <laughs> what it would be. Except Neelix yeah. doesn't get to like give everyone orders, which is uh, no. Yeah, so this is that guy that I've mentioned a couple times. There's always some guy that they've got along with them that for some reason is allowed to order Captain Kirk around, and he gets them into so much trouble. This guy is an inch away from getting his ass killed for behaving like that. Yep. Hooray. This is, I mean, this is, this is a 10. This is one of my favorite episodes. This is a really good, a, a good one. I, I don't like, know if I'm going to give it a 10 necessarily, sure. but like, <laughs> it's definitely up there, you know? I, really, I, I it's a solid episode, a lot of fun, and yeah. uh, I like the message. I do. I like the he- it may be heavy handed, but I still like the whole the whole thing, you know. So I think got... it's also a good one to introduce somebody to Star Trek. Yeah, like, it feels like a nice introductory episode. Like this is what you're getting into if you start watching this, you know. Show him this one, and then show him the one with Wesley and step it on the flowers. Oh fuck, Wesley. <laughs> I used to love Wesley as a character when I was younger, and now I'm an adult. I'm like, why, why, why? There's really some funny shit he does. I can't believe nobody talks about the fact that he creates an entire like race of life form. He they they really did Mary Sue him pretty hard in a lot of ways. Yeah, he gets a little. Yeah, he really like. He's a he's a super kid. He's like the super kid sidekick, the super genius kid sidekick, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It was the nineties. That kind of thing was going on. Um, yeah. So Mr. Fox, played by Neelix, is the guy that for some reason, 
What would it be? What would would there be? Would there be any reason that like Mister ne- that Neelix would be like? Well, he definitely wouldn't be ordering Janeway around, but maybe he's like in this sector of space. I think it's well, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be like, let's go to this planet with a code seven ten, because that's what's going on. There's a code no. seven ten, which means don't go to this fucking planet. But Mister Fox demands that we go to this planet to establish diplomatic relations. Like, Mr. Fox should, like, at least scout the place out, or at least wait until... I mean, really, this planet is labeled Do Not Go Here, and he's like, no, that's the one. We have to. We don't know a lot about his motivations or his orders. Yeah, we don't know why (laughs) this is coming up in the first place at all. It just is the state of being. He says that, like, they need to get a foothold into this sector. The whole sector is warlike. You know? Yeah, but they don't say why this specific planet, and that's the problem I'm finding. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. If you need a, a foothold in the sector, go for it. But, like, this this planet does not have to be the one. There's no indication given to the viewer that this is going to do better overall than, say, any other planet. It's just this is the one he, he, this is he the one wants, he chose. and he will and, take it. And he's in charge, goddammit. I'm Mr. Fox, and we're going to the Forbidden Planet. Exactly. Hey, have we seen oh. a, a USS Valiant anywhere? I feel like there's a Valiant that comes up in like Voyager or DS9, but I'm not sure. I, I, I almost, I kind of feel like it might be one of the small ones in DS9, but it, uh, I, I feel like there's a, but yeah, God, now I've seen. All right, I've done much. a memory alpha Google. Okay, uh, for what, USS Valiant? Yep, it is a Defiant class starship operated by oh. Starfleet in the 24th Century Federation. DS9. NCC 74210, and it was destroyed in 2374. If it's a Defiant class, I didn't know the Defiant was a class. I didn't know that that was Defiant class. And I'm assuming that the Defiant is Defiant class. I'm assuming that as well. But there Looks was like another. It, it was only around for two years, this one, and under the command of Captain Ramirez. Hmm, Captain Ramirez, man. Well, we're gonna watch DS9. That sounds like DS9. Like the Valiant uh, was yeah. the Valiant was uh Avery Brooks's. Yeah, no, I'm looking Cisco. at it. Um three thirty five crew members including Nog and Jake. Only three oh. survived the val- the, the oh, battle. Man. I wonder if that's when Nog got his uh spoilers. You know something happens to Nog, right? Nope. Okay, well, Never mind. <laughs> I, d- I know nothing about uh, about Nog and D- I know of Nog. I know he's like okay. Quark's, Quark, he's Quark's nephew. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Oh man, you know what? he was a little one. He was a kid that was best friends with Drake, and then his dad was the one who becomes the um, the leader of the the Romulans eventually, the Grand Magus. The Frenchy. That's what I meant. I, you're not going to believe what I'm about to say. What? My air conditioner is running, and I have to get up and turn it off. Okay, I, that's fine. <laughs> after after all of the stuff about noises coming from you, <laughs> that's obviously right, it's like this is the same thing. Like I don't hear it because man, I phone. knew it. I almost said something. This I'm is me from the future. I knew I had my fucking air condition. God yeah. damn it! <laughs> Just a classic maneuver. Um. Yeah, but I believe that why I mentioned the USS Valiant is that someone is even like, uh, we've got a report, Spock, maybe Spock is like, we got a report that the USS Valiant came to this planet and it was fucking destroyed. We probably shouldn't go there. Yeah. (laughs) And there's a bunch of, I wrote down in my notebook, very drama, because there's a bunch of really heavy drama orchestral hits around this time. Yeah, there's a lot of like the dun dun dun. Yeah, exactly. For the that. entire episode. Yeah, yeah. This is a high drama. Yeah, the whole episode is extreme drama, and like I can't stress the Janeway thing enough. Like Kirk yeah, no, is going right. bonkers. <laughs> Kirk it and Spock. Really, it really feels like Voyager, and yeah. I wish I had have realized it myself. Once you said it, it's like no, no, shit. this is the Voyager episode. Kirk and Spock are on a fucking rampage. They're destroying the infrastructure of this planet. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so they... 
at the orders of Mr. Fox, they teleport down, and the leader, A Non Seven, is like, uh, and it seems like they know. Like it almost, I'm not even sure. It almost seems like they chose to be listed as Code Seven Ten out here because they're like, "What are you doing?" Like they, and this planet has space travel. They've mm -hmm. never left their system. Uh, they either they have warned the Federation not to come here, the Federation, or just the Federation knows the Valiant was destroyed. But it sure seems like Anon Seven knows that people understand not to come to this planet because he's like immediately, "Why are you here?" Yeah. And there's a couple scenes of kind of the setup where like Kirk is, you know, they're doing they're getting their tricorder readings, and Kirk and Spock are talking about there's no sign of damage anywhere on the planet there's no radiation like it doesn't seem like they're at war and anon seven keeps talking about this terrible war that they've been at for 500 years where three million civilians are killed a year this is let's see if i can do it the planet eminiar and the third planet in the system vendicar they've been at a bloody war it's unbelievably terrible. He can't believe the Enterprise is here. And Spock and Kirk are walking around going, these planets look unbelievably peaceful. There's no damage, no... These planets are not at war. These guys are doing some kind of role-playing. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> they are, you know, I guess uh, they're kind of being shown around or maybe... For whatever reason, they end up all in the war room when there is an attack from Vendikar. And we see, you know, big areas of the maps getting lit up as though they've been struck by some kind of attack. They're talking about how there's a, a, a one of the weapons has hit right here in the city and all these people are classified dead and uh, everyone's very upset. And uh, it comes out that this is all a war games type simulation and that the peace agreement, the peace agreement or whatever treaty they've agreed upon is that whatever the computers say, calculating whoever should be dead based on whatever attacks and you know it did it, it value it takes into account the defenses of the city and these different things and does the math and says this many people are dead and these civilians must report to the disintegration machines they have 24 hours and then they must send the video evidence of their deaths to vendicar and it also feels, it <laughs> feels like voyeuristic um almost i don't know how to word this in a way that makes makes it make sense but it, it, like the thoughts forming as i'm saying it so bear sure. with me i'm here yeah but like it feels voyeuristic in like violent like snuff film type sort of a thing you know yeah like we're getting off on this computer killing our civilians and sending them to the the video specifically especially where it's like yeah you have to send proof that they're dead but to, like no one's gonna know otherwise without this video so they have this video that people have then sit down and watch of civilians just yeah. being murdered. Imagine and that's that where, guy's job. Yeah, that that just feels like a snuff film in a way, and it's just gross. It, it's really I don't know that that specifically is very uncomfortable with the way it's presented in there. Everything about this is bizarre. It is uncomfortable. These people are obviously uh, psychopaths and fucking idiots, both. Yes, I agree. There's and there's it, clearly something going on that they've been brainwashed into that is not not okay yeah i think this is another one where we have 500 years of doing what a computer has told us to and that's just what we do we've been doing it this is the way and yep. it's fucking lunacy <laughs> and they need the the kind benevolence of an outsider to be like yo what up it also in some ways feels almost colonistic okay so like again vaguely got the thought forming as i'm saying it but the sure. idea that like You've got these people who are are backwards, um, quote unquote savages. One might say the way that, like the the Europeans had that perspective of of natives in North America when they came here, right? Okay. Um, and that it feels almost like that's happening. Like they're trying to be like a show that they can fix it to a degree, but also like have like the the general or whatever the guy um, Ford was it Fox? Oh, Fox. Thank you, Fox feels like he's supposed to be that stand-in for like colonialization okay and then like kirk kind of just being like no man like dude back off and and teaching like showing like that that's a bad thing to a degree okay yeah. maybe not to the full the full extent of what could have been shown but 
it kind of has that that feel on the edge of it you know if you want to look into it and try and analyze it on a de deeper level totally and uh this doesn't this does this episode doesn't mention the prime directive at all but it's also but you can look at this obviously and you can talk about this as a prime directive episode but the but and as a comment on what you were saying to get back there uh the prime directive almost well i mean it is anti-colonial yes it's the whole thing is we're trying not to do this and this is well a good reason to stay away from a place if people say do not come here you know yeah you know about that guy that got shot with a bow and arrow at that island there's um a couple of places like that but yeah, yeah. there's one in particular there's a really famous famous story about a, a guy, uh, yeah. an untouched native cannibalistic tribe that a buddy that buddy was told to not go to and he was like yeah i, I can go like, anyway yeah i want to say it was like soldier island maybe something like that. i can't remember the name of the island but it comes it, up on a, occasion on my a, yeah there's a spe there's one specific or at least you know very well known story about but that being said there's a couple there's a couple of islands like that though like there's the dollhead island that yeah. don't go to there because it's haunted um okay. and it, it, yeah. the story is that there's a dude who used to live there who that was like he owned the island and he just he collected all the dolls like washed up ashore and then hung them all of like them all over the place it's just a really creepy vibe now that he's passed away he's like he's not caring for the island anymore and you just don't go there um or there's the snake island same idea it's like super poisonous don't step foot on the island or you could die there's a bunch of places in that sphere okay where it's just don't just don't go just do not go there heed warnings and, and avoid it or you may not go home you know but also specifically if it's the people that live there saying don't come here that's you know <laughs> Well, some of it's people, some of it's outsiders. Like, there's an island that was used during um, the plague, like during the Black Death, for um, corpse disposal. And I believe it was in Italy somewhere. I can't remember where now exactly. Um, but because of how many bodies were being buried there, it just was poisonous to go to. Like, you were, you were super likely to catch the plague because it was just a diseased island and it was unsafe for health purposes, you know? <laughs> okay. Sorry. No. Uh, islands me. islands are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um so in this attack the enterprise. So did we get to so now everyone has to report to be disintegrated. Everyone yes. whoever was deemed part of the attack in the city, which is basically everyone there not Anon. Uh and the enterprise was destroyed, so they're going to trick the crew they call anon puts on a fake kirk voice and he calls up the enterprise and he's like hey this is captain kirk scotty everything's great down here they want us to come down and have a vacation with them and get really drunk and yeah <laughs> smoke space weed and get space <laughs> drunk and scotty's like that doesn't sound like the captain the captain hates having fun yeah, so Kirk and Spock are being held in a cell because, yeah, and this isn't even like, I mean, when it's Wesley, they're kind of like, Picard, I don't know what you want to do. Like, you can just beam him out of there. We can't stop you. But like, this is our fucking law. We have to kill Wesley. And Picard has to come down and they have to talk it up. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, this you, is that's like not what they're doing here at all. Though. This is not that's not what's happening here. Here they they got him in a cell. We're gonna murder you, fuckers. We're gonna trick your crew into coming down so we can murder them too. And if anyone else from the Federation ever comes here, guess what? They're getting murdered as. <laughs> it's not quite like that, but definitely yeah. murder ha happy. They're 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 saying that this has to happen because it's part this of the rules. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's no apology with with Wesley, at least in that episode of TNG, the people perpetrating Wesley's death were uh, they at least came off as if they were apologetic that like, hey, you know what? This sucks. You yeah. guys didn't know. We get it. But it is still our laws. We still have to do it. Sorry. Whereas here they're like, yeah, no, you're dead. No, we don't. We don't. We don't care. It's not an apology situation. Like, too bad. So sad. You should have listened to the warning and just not bothered showing up. Like, this is your own damn fault. It's very, very victim blamey in this one versus the Wesley episode where it just comes off a lot more uh, genuine and a lot more like 
they recognize that this is this is not a great position to be in, you know? Yeah. That one is so weird. <laughs> it really is. You uh, know what? I actually I like the episode anyways, like the Wesley one, it's still a solid episode, even though it is just a little bit kooky. Yeah. But yeah, Kirk and Spock. They uh they very easily ambush the guard, which I guess this guard probably doesn't see a lot of combat if people are just reporting to the disintegration machine like willy nilly. So mm -hmm. they're able to trick this. That like I mean, the guy opens the door, takes one step in, and they just grab him. <laughs> they get guns. They're like, let's get some weapons. Yeah, Kirk is seriously. This is Janeway level. We're not fucking around. Get the fucking. I like the look of these weird disruptors with like many little pointy antenna beams coming out of the front of them. Mm -hmm. The prime directive is off the table. They're they're running around destroying the disintegration machines, and Anon Seven has had enough. He's like, destroy the Star Cruiser. So Scotty's up there in orbit, putting the shields up, and uh, Mister Fox comes onto the bridge and how do you think mr fox feels about all this he is very angry because why would you bother attacking this planet that we're trying to make peace with and like set up relations like that just undermines his whole mission that we still barely know anything about what are you idiots doing why aren't you making peace why are you getting shot at <laughs> He's and again, all of these characters are just made for the audience to hate them, to be like, yeah. "You asshole, let the crew do their thing." God damn it! Yeah, no, this one here. It also this one was really trying to show why Kirk hates non-military people. Oh yeah, because this guy is an idiot. This guy is yeah. seriously he is an inch away from getting himself absolutely vaporized. Well, he even goes down. They're all like, "Please don't go down to the planet." Something is hinky. We're pretty sure you're gonna die. And he's like, "No, I'm going down to the planet. Screw you guys. Like, I'm doing. I'm doing what I want to do. Like, just very, like, just n complete lack of of self awareness around oh, yeah. how not to die in these sorts of situations. A lack of awareness concerning how not to die. Yeah, one hundred percent. He gets on the fucking phone with Anon Seven. And Anon is like, this is all a mistake. Our, we're at war, and we thought you were the approaching Vulcanian, Vulcarians, whatever the hell the other guys are called. And that's why we accidentally fired upon you. And look, we're not firing anymore, and we've got Kirk right here, and everything's cool. So why don't you lower your shields and come on down? And Mr. Fox is like, great, here I come. Lower the shields. Yeah. <laughs> and me, and the second later, it, the uh, Anon hangs up the phone and he says the second they lower their shields destroy that fucking starship i'm goddamn sick of this that's what i'm saying like complete lack of awareness on how not to die fucking goddamn mr fox kirk has a big fight and is eventually overpowered by anon's men and anon calls kirk a barbarian and mr fox beams down to the planet anon greets mr fox all like yeah mr fox got some other dork so Anon's like, come on in, dorks. Why don't you just step inside our palace here or whatever? The second they're inside the door, Anon is like, here's a gun. Uh, you guys are immediately going to the disintegration machine. Why the fuck isn't the ship lowered its shields yet? But, uh, well, you know what? We'll figure that part out. But you guys are just, I can't wait to disintegrate you assholes. Yeah, I'm very excited for, for murder. For love, good love I can't wait to videotape your death and send it to my hated enemy. <laughs> it would have been great if Kirk had just like kicked this guy in the balls right before leaving. Well, it's and <laughs> he does me, verbally. I, I, I may have I may have gotten it wrong, but isn't this guy tr like trying to pretend that they were super civilized and that Kirk and them were the barbarians and not yes. the other way around? Yes, that's what that's what this man because they have order because they yeah. have, because they have law because the law is absolute. You know what Picard says in the episode where they try to kill Wesley. Uh, I don't know the specific line that you're thinking of. There can be no justice if the mm. law is absolute. Yep. So yeah. Spock, uh, Spock manages somehow to get a communicator and he calls up Scotty and he's like, Scotty, we got to do General Order 24, which I guess is destroy the planet we're orbiting. I thought it was was it that one because he did he had a couple that they brought up there was like the the 
destroy the planet and destroy the ship, I think. I'm pretty sure Scotty... Well, Scotty at some point um, is on the communicator with, like, Anon and his goons. And Scotty is like, we are going to destroy the entire surface area. Or at least where you guys are. Mm. <laughs> like, for real. Not like a yeah. simulation. <laughs> you know, I know there was a couple of different orders that came up. I just can't remember which what they all were exactly, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, and I mean, I've already discussed the fact that Kirk and Spock are on a rampage and destroying stuff all over this building. But, like, these are, like... I mean, obviously, you know, if this, you know, the big threat is that if the amount of people are not executed within 24 hours, then there will be an escalation, the treaties will be off, and real war will occur and everyone will die. Um, but like, so it almost, so it doesn't matter, basically what I'm saying, so it doesn't matter that Kirk and Spock are going around committing acts of war by destroying these guys, even their ability to commit to their treaty uh but it really doesn't matter because in the end kirk says you think i'm a barbarian i am i'm dooming your entire society to war and chaos and nuclear devastation and you know what you guys can figure it out or not i don't give a fuck <laughs> and that's when he kicks anon right in the balls it's great <laughs> he really it feel cathartic he definitely like He's definitely like, I am a barbarian, and fuck you. You can all get vaporized. And then in the end, in the very end, when he's safe on the Enterprise, he's like, even if we had vaporized that whole planet, it would have been exactly the same as what they're doing, so fuck those people. <laughs> and I guess no one ever goes back there until Lower Decks, of course. Maybe. We don't know if they go back there on Lower Decks. Yeah, I feel like they do, but I don't actually remember for sure. So uh, it's been a, it's been a while since I've watched through all of Lower Decks, and I I wasn't listening for this planet specifically, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean this. Yeah, big Janeway energy. This one is uh, just a roller coaster of just constant action and great lines and not and like it's like Kirk just like can't even believe these people like from the yeah. very beginning. He's just like, what the fuck is this? And of course, the uh, his solution is fry all their computers. Fuck these people. This is the computer that does the calculations that kill people. Get the get get fucking rid of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Great. No, Great. and it, it, like you've said it a few times, but like that's the that that is the Janeway response to absolutely. Oh, you're doing shit that's bad. We're gonna take away your op op uh, ability to do the bad thing. Picard would never do this shit. No, Picard would have been right there with Fox trying to talk them down. Yep. Which has Picard its would have been getting his ass way. vaporized. Yeah, that has its merits in its own way. It's yeah. just... And you know what? It's interesting because, like, Kirk gets treated like this massive um, renegade all the time, right? And, like, Picard is a super down-to-earth and chill dude. But, like, if you look at their histories, it's because it's, it's all because who they're with, right? Like, Kirk looks wild because Spock is so buttoned down. And um, yeah, yeah. Picard looks so buttoned down because Riker is so wild. Yeah, I but love yeah, it. No, it. I love this. It's one. a great episode. This is a fan. I think a nine. I think a nine for me. I think I really like it. I will. I will happily watch that again. But I don't think it's the best episode from TOS. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. It's it's right up there, but I don't think it's it's like the uh, contender for like the top. You know? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, is. Uh... I'm sure I've given something else a ten. At this point. Uh, yeah, you gave you gave Squire of Gothos a ten. We both gave okay, Squire of Gothos. Yeah. That's a. I mean, that's I, a banger. And, I, I think, and that's yeah. I think Gothos is better overall than the this same one. kind of nonstop energy, though. I think like the yeah, the, this, yeah, and, like yeah. And then you also gave um, Balance of Terror got a ten from you. Car oh wow! Okay. Cor 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 Mike got a ten because of course it did. Okay, you, you I like yeah. Never mind. I like them all. <laughs> yeah, it's not that, the, that the, any of those are bad. Like I don't have a limit gotten... of the amount of tens I'm allowed to give out. Can I give out no. a golden ten once per I... season or once per per series? I think I think when we hit the end of the season, let's oh, do okay. one. What's your top right. pick for the season? I think Great. that's I think okay. that's a good option. I like it. I'm so, down with that. Operation Annihilate is episode twenty nine. We just finished twenty three. Then a few episodes will sit down. Annihilate. 
Yeah, uh, crew must find a way to exterminate behavior altering parasites that have taken over the oh, bodies yeah. of presidents. Well, oh, yeah, it's, col- the, it's brain slugs. And it's Kirk's brother, Sam, and family. Oh, the my God, it's popular. Sam Kirk. Yep, the episode is popular for revealing new facts about Vulcan physiology. Ooh. Yeah. So that when we get to that one, I think that's a good spot to do, like, this season, the best episode. And we can even do at the end of the season, oh, sorry, series, is like, when we hit the last episode, like season three of TOS, we can sit down and what's our favorite TOS period, you know? Great. Great. Good idea. That's what we'll do. All right. All right, yeah, cool. no, I, good episode overall. Uh, well done. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. That's fun. I like it. Me too. Thank you. And no for worries. Thank you. watching it with me and talking to me about it. I appreciate you uh, hanging out and hosting it so I don't have to pay for the service. Cool. I, well, I mean, I, yeah, Paramount, there's lots of stuff I like on Paramount. I have, we have done it. We have watched Twin Peaks. Congratulations. I know that that was another big like endeavor i i really recommend it if you're ever bored and you need something to watch on tv oh but well i mean i don't know if it's on, if it's ever on something other than something you're not paying for <laughs> i had if you ever the, the I, opportunity to see it i just it's a great show when i watched the bit with you back like the first day oh you did i i did i watched like an episode or two and i really struggled to get into it i found it a little bit too slow for me it's it's it is it is put you to sleep on purpose television yeah and like, don't get me wrong. I love, I love Kyle MacLachlan, and like yeah. the fact that he's in it is nice. But I just, I found it a very difficult watch to cool to guy. get into. It was not catching me quickly, and maybe, yeah. may, if I get further into the season, I will. But I was not like the couple episodes just didn't do it. It's very slow, and really honest. And season two is like such. Uh, it's it's tough. It's a hard show to sit down and watch. To, to, yeah. To, to sum it up, just the, the whole thing. I could say specific things about certain parts of it, but it's 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 a tough watch. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna. I don't know. I think if we ever get around to watching Farscape together, that you'll enjoy it. But I think it's going to be a similar. It's a it's it's one of those that grabs you or it doesn't ones. You know. Okay, that's the Muppets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I want to I want to check out the Muppets. The I, Muppets I, I'm show. down to show it to you. Honestly, oh, yeah. I think we also got to do a special episode about the pigs in space. Things. Yeah, I, we still gotta find gotta, them all. And, yeah. Like, yeah, get them together, get the clips. I think. Um, finish up vi- vampires. I want to get that done. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then I think yeah. after that, movie night. If we can, if I'm able to keep doing movie night at all. Yeah. Um, gets moved over to Farscape. And try that for a bit and see if that grabs you. And if not, we can find something else. Obviously, you know. Sure. Um, we could. I mean, we could. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, let's not. Let's say the month of July is just fucked, and <laughs> um, I feel like. But I mean, also like an after, like this, like at noon, like getting together to watch Vamp- Vampire the Mass Vampire the Interview <laughs> 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 would, would be fine. <laughs> well, all right. Thank you for listening to the Least Ready Room. Next week we are going to be talking about the episode with the spores, which is maybe called a taste of paradise or something like that. The question for the week regarding that episode will be if you could go to Drugs Planet and not have to eat or do anything and you were in a good mood all the time, but you could never do anything else other than sit around and get high for the rest of your life. Is that something you would like to do? It's not very, not really a very open-ended question. It's kind of a yes or no question, which obviously I should steer away from if I want discussion. But I want to know. I want to know if you would be content to sit around on drugs for the rest of your life. (laughs) It's a funny episode. Uh, Because I got the release order of these podcasts out of order... Uh, The question for this week is out of order. And okay, we'll make up for it when we get to it. We're not going to see any Klingons for a little while. I don't think we're going to see them next week. Maybe. No, we're not. It's going to be the spores, the taste of Forbidden Paradise, Drugs Planet. Uh, So, but anyway, where was I? The question I asked 
for this week was incorrectly, <laughs> but it was. What is your favorite episode with Klingons, or your favorite media with space orcs, or just regular orcs? <laughs> I said that my favorite Klingon is Bolana Taurus, which is probably correct, and that my favorite Klingon episode might be when Cisco and O'Brien get Klingon implants and try to infiltrate some Klingon meeting. And I feel like uh, I feel like I correct myself because I actually I'm pretty sure I know what my favorite Klingon episode was, but I think someone brings it. Well, anyway, let's see what. Let's see what everyone had to say <laughs> instead of me speculating on what I'm about to read. Atheist Man is currently really liking the orcs in Practical Guide to Evil, which is something I, th I think I'm supposed to be checking out. Saint242 says, while I think about a specific episode, I will say that the Klingon Bird of Prey ships with the flappy wing bits for different flight modes is one of my all-time favorite spaceships in all sci-fi. And... Uh, that ship is cool, and I love that the Enterprise cool the Enterprise crew have this ship all of movie four. <laughs> um, ah, a foolish princess. Oh man, I meant to figure out what PF two is. A foolish princess says PF two now allows any ancestry to be half orc. I have a half orc, half rat folk, based on Dave the intern, who claims to be a nutria. Nutria are weird and big. <laughs> Um, yes, Weebs says, and this is the one, yeah, this is my favorite Klingon episode. Weebs says, Worf being a bozo on Ryza because he doesn't want anyone to have fun is an interesting plot device. That's like pinnacle Worf. That episode is not, it's, it's too much. It's Worf jumps the shark there. He's too much, too Worfy. He's never that Worfy again. It's too much. Uh, Toronto ABC, uh, that's Chris, <laughs> says, I like Torres too. Not sure on favorite Klingon or Orcish thing yet. Okay. I should ask her about that. Maybe that'll be, her answer will be in an upcoming episode. Sometimes we do that. I'm trying to get, I'm really trying to get on some kind of structured schedule to make these shows. Um, shit, what was I about to, uh, oh yeah, I mean, it's Tuesday right now. I think I want this one to come out on Monday. I think I want the other one to come out on Friday, but so far that's not been happening. But I do, th I think that's what I want. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll change it. Right now it's Tuesday. Maybe it would be better to put this one out on Wednesday. I usually record it out on, on Monday and Friday. The other, you know what, why, why am I doing this? Thrash Key Issue says, Worf is definitely a favorite. Torres is not far behind. Favorite episode is pretty much any time any Klingon is bewildered or mildly peeved by an empathetic human trait, which is all of the time. Love Klingons. Great. Uh, Saint242 returns to say, okay, so my favorite Klingon media story is an old video game called Klingon Academy. It was a sequel to a game, I suddenly have hiccups, called Starfleet Academy. You flew around Star Trek capital ships, flight simulator style. That sounds cool. The campaign of the game was split into two parts and took place shortly before Star Trek uh, VI. The first half was you as a... Did you notice that I, I, I don't automatically parse <laughs> Roman numerals? I had to sit and like figure it out. The first half of you... <laughs> <laughs> the first half was you as a Klingon officer in their special officer academy. And your professors are Worf, an ancestor of Lieutenant Commander Worf. So is that, oh, but not the lawyer in Star Trek VI. And Chang, Christopher Plummer, yeah, doing FMV briefings like CNC Red Alert. That's cool. They run you through a simulated war where you invade the Federation. And the final mission is you blowing up the Enterprise A and deploying a Genesis device on Earth. Then a real Klingon civil war breaks out and you spend the back half of the campaign fighting other Klingons. Excuse me. And then eventually some Romulans who were interfering in the Klingon civil war. Pretty sure they stole that plot line from TNG season five to six. There's definitely, it definitely ties into TNG five and six, yeah. They had a bird of prey that could fire without uncloaking as a special unlock unlockable. That sounds fucking bro. Oh, <laughs> I that was me starting to comment that it sounds fucking broken. But if I let him finish his sentence as a special unlockable with a cheat code and it was totally un and it was totally broken. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so those are yeah. That was the question of the week. 
uh, for last week about Klingons. The question coming up is, do you want to go to Drugs Planet? And that's all for this week. Uh, if you want to answer those questions or talk to me about Star Trek or anything else, uh, do podcasts or whatever, you can come see me on, where is it? Discord. You can get a link to my Discord at koyadk.tv. C-U-Y-A-D-K.tv. And also check out lakehousesubs.com. Thank you. See you next week for Drugs Planet. <laughs>